heinous comic. We open on a conversation between Chris and a police officer. Hello, Chris. I am Officer Kano, Ivy's father. Kano shows Chris his badge, which reads, To serve and protect, elite officer. I am humbled to meet you, sir, says Chris, saluting with his favorite Wolf Scout two-finger salute. At ease, says Officer Kano. My little girl has taken a shine to you, as I have, for my job. Do you see this badge? I have worked through sweat loads of endurance and strength to earn it. Do you feel as worthy for Ivy? Yes, sir, says Chris, as my mother and father and my humble heart can vouch for my true, valiant self. I swear in the name of God and Jesus, I will remain at my best for Ivy, sir. You've got lots of spunk, sir, says Officer Kano, and I respect that. All things considered, from background and I standing before you, Kano Pot then takes Chris's hand in a manly handshake. I feel you have been through and seen a lot of torment, and still managed to triumph through it all with a strong heart and fighting soul. You're good in my book, Christian. I entrust Ivy into your strong, capable hands. Later, at the Double Twick Hotel, Christian Weston Chandler and Ivy have arrived to check in. Ivy is wearing a wedding gown while Chris wears a tuxedo adorned with his son and shoe medallion. He hands his mayoral issue credit card to the one behind the desk and says, Yes, I have reserved the penthouse honeymoon suite. Chandler is the name. Petal roses arranged delightfully, lavender scented air freshers, and a candlelit dinner of grilled chicken, greens, and mashed potatoes, with chocolate puddings for dessert. At the penthouse honeymoon suite, Chris carries Ivy over the threshold and into their room. At each electrical outlet, light plug in air freshers emit an erotic aroma of lavender. Pink rose petals are sprinkled along the floor, leading from the door to the bed, which has more rose petals arranged in a heart shape. In bed, the loving couple wastes no time as Ivy removes her dress and Chris takes off his shoes, and they begin to kiss passionately. Soon, they are both completely nude, save for Chris's sonichu medallion, which is still around his neck as he mounts his sweetheart. Having completed the obligatory foreplay, Chris stands up to reveal his genitals. His erect manhood is enormous, twisted and bent, like a crooked tree emerging from a forest of pubic hair. Ivy sits up and presents her own genitalia, anxiously awaiting intercourse. As Chris penetrates his lover, the two suddenly transform. Chris becomes his alter ego of Chris Chan Sonichi, while Ivy has become some new form resembling an orange rosichi. They continue making love this way, until at last they both look to the sky and thank Providence for this moment. Thank you, God, thinks Ivy. Thank you, God, thinks Chris. As they orgasm simultaneously, an explosion of fireworks engulfs the entire suite. Later that day, at dinner... To our true love, say Chris and Ivy in unison, apparently unfazed by the explosion of fireworks, they have returned to human form and wear robes as they share a toast of quick orange soda, served in wine glasses. Are you enjoying the chicken? Chris asks. Yes, I am, says Ivy. Do you think you will be having the chicken again? Chris asks. Yes, I will, says Ivy, and I hope the chicken will still feel the same way I do then. But it's a fact that I'm the seventh son. Thank you.